water now is really starting to pour over. If you look at the ground, whoa. Okay, that wasn't good. Watching the Kamala Harris campaign implode has been a thing of beauty, and it's hilarious because the more she appears in public, the less people like her, right? And you can see the fear in the eyes of all the left-wing pundits on the cable news shows. Oh, what in the world are we going to do? We've only got 20-some-odd days left until the election. How can she turn it around? And hopefully, she can't. And you can tell it's really bad because now they brought out Barack Obama, okay, the only person who has any popularity on the left whatsoever. But what's going to be his main line of encouragement to get people to vote? We have not yet seen the same kinds of energy and turnout in all quarters of our neighborhoods and communities as we saw when I was running. Now, I also want to say that that seems to be more pronounced with the brothers. So if you don't mind, just for a second, I'm going to speak to y'all directly and say that when you have a choice that is this clear, <clears throat> when on the one hand you have somebody who grew up like you, knows you, went to college with you, understands the struggles and pain and joy that comes from those experiences. So this is great because he's not making an argument on the economy. He's not making an argument on the border. He's not making an argument on public safety or world safety or any of that stuff. He's just saying, hey, there's one factor above all that black voters should care about, and that is skin color. And as we know, Donald Trump has been making huge inroads among the black community, specifically among the working age men from 18 to 30, right? His numbers there are tremendous, okay? But Kamala Harris, despite still having about 80% support of the black vote in total is not happy with that. She wants all of it. Got to get back on that plantation right away. Okay, No one is allowed to leave. But a lot of the harm inflicted on the Kamala Harris campaign has been by her own words. And this, of course, is recognized even by Charlemagne the God. There is not a thing that comes to mind in terms of, and I've been a part of, of, of most of the decisions that have had impact. Republicans are going after Vice President Kamala Harris for saying she'd do nothing differently from President Biden. Now, she made these comments while speaking um, on The View earlier this week. Uh, the VP was asked what she would have done differently from Biden over the past four years. So the Trump Vance campaign immediately pounced on the response with J.D. Vance posting, Kamala Harris is more of the same, adding she admits it herself. The Harris campaign earlier said the candidate would highlight some differences she had with Biden. Any thoughts on that? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with her distancing herself, and I don't know why... Like, it's like Especially because he's out of here, too. Yeah, it's like she's afraid to. At first, people were saying that it was going to be a bad look if she did because it was going to look like she wasn't loyal to the party. But now it's like we're all here telling the truth. So. Right. She definitely needs to highlight differences, especially being that President Biden uh, is, is not a popular president to mm -hmm. the American people. Like, you know, President Biden has some good things that he's done. You know why he's been in the White House the past almost four years. But he's not a popular president. So j just just from a campaign strategy you should say, oh, we definitely have a lot of differences. And and just maybe leave it at that and say, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll explain later. But yes, there's a lot of things that I would definitely do different. But I am proud of the good things that we have done. Like, you leave it at that, right? But don't just, don't say, there's, you don't think of nothing you would change. I, I'm with you. A lot of people are not happy with Biden. So the fact that you're saying that I wouldn't change anything and the fact that people are not necessarily happy about that, Makes it sound a little crazy to me. You can say that, you know, he did some good things, but also say that we have a lot of differences. Like, I mean, when you got an approval rating as, like, as low as Joe Biden, there's nothing wrong with saying, yeah, I got some differences with this guy. Yeah. Just, just from a campaign well, strategy. So Kamala's media blitz ended up being a complete disaster. 60 Minutes, Howard Stern, The View, right? This is one of the biggest political mistakes ever made. We all know that Joe Biden is incredibly unpopular. That's why he was forced out of the race, okay? So for Kamala Harris to actually say, I can't think of anything I do different. On TV, to a large audience, that was her campaign aborting itself, all right? It's a good thing she has those stances, right? <laughs>
I guess you should have just stolen another Trump idea, right? That would have been the safe bet, okay? But as I mentioned at the beginning, seeing the fear in the media's eyes as they come to the realization that, you know what? People just don't like her and hopefully she's going to lose in November is glorious to watch. Check this out. I mean, I don't, I think the vibe right now uh, isn't great. There's concern, but partly we have this plethora of polls and they all say something slightly different. So, you know, if she's two points up in one poll in a state and another poll comes out and says she's a point down, um, that is around the bedwetting and so on. I'm not minimizing the fact that I do think she stalled out about uh, 10 days after the debate. I kind of think the war was a circuit breaker there yeah. and kind of because I don't think that's, you know, people started thinking about the commander in chief thing and yeah, uh, but. Uh, and there were some other things. And I and I have to say that the Trump campaign has been very, very, while well, he's undisciplined, they are very disciplined in their media. And their media is designed to cast her as, A, a continuation of Biden's economics, and B, an exotic left-wing, you know. Uh, Worse than exotic, rat really. Well, yeah, radical. Like, you know, and. Queer, uh, loving, non-binary, right. loving radical is going to, you know, change your kid's right. gender. Right. So um, they have been burning that message in. And um, I think that's had some impact uh, as well. So, uh, you know, is it is it right to be concerned? It's right to be concerned. This is a very, very close race, though. I mean, the reality of the race is you're talking about uh, virtual ties in almost all the battleground states. Now, the question that you know, plays in people's minds is, uh, does Trump pr produce what he has in the past, which is, you know, hidden vote that comes out yeah. at the end. So is a tie <clears throat> actually a win for him? So David Axelrod of Clinton fame is out here saying that the Trump messaging is trying to cast Kamala Harris in the light of a continuation of Joe Biden as being a radical leftist. Well, guess what? That's not messaging. That's the truth. All right. She has said that she is the same as Joe Biden. Joe Biden himself has tied her to his campaign, saying they're in lockstep. They're singing the same song. And Kamala Harris herself is on video with the most radical positions you can possibly imagine. Completely open borders, mass amnesty, trans and surgeries for inmates, all right? These are not things that you just say off the cuff. These are your actual true core beliefs. And now she's running away from them because she realizes it's so unpopular with the American people. So I say, yes, the messaging matches the reality, David Axelrod, and thank goodness for that. But of course, it doesn't stop there. Doug, there have been numerous articles just in the past few days about the crumbling blue wall for Kamala Harris. So obviously Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, uh, but but it wasn't so long ago that Wisconsin was really considered her state to lose. That they really had a pretty solid grip on it. They had that Supreme Court uh, election there. What's going on in that state, um, in your estimation? I, I think what we're seeing is the working class vote is moving in the direction of Trump. Non-college educated voters, um, blue collar men, are all moving in Trump's direction. Some movement, as you suggested, Laura, among minorities in Wisconsin, African-Americans, to Trump. Basically, the blue wall in Wisconsin and Michigan is eroding as the South, uh, defined as Georgia, uh, North Carolina, Southwest Arizona, appear to be trending Trump. We're looking now at five states, five swing states that are potentially Trump's, and if Pennsylvania goes, the election is over, all the trends are showing the same movement. It's not over, you're right, but it sure is moving Trump's direction. So another Clinton holdover, Doug Schoen, is actually out here saying, yes, there is movement towards Donald Trump. And who's it among? The working class, because they recognize that Kamala Harris is nothing but a leftist, someone who doesn't want to actually improve the economy. Someone who doesn't want to actually bring jobs to the American people. Instead, she wants to give away jobs, give away the country to the illegal immigrants, right? The new mascot of the left. And when you put that out as your main message, guess what? The American people are going to respond in kind. And thank goodness that results in movement 
movement towards Donald Trump in all of these swing states that will end up deciding the election. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and stay safe out there, people, because they're coming after you.